I'm going to uh, talk about a LARP called Till Death Do Us Part. And Till Death Do Us Part was a LARP about a wedding. Why is this happening? Come on. Oh, sorry. Yes, a LARP about a wedding between Khulud on the left, a Palestinian woman, and Haral, a Norwegian man. Um, the LARP was set in Birsait in Palestine in August of 2012. It was organized by the Palestinian organization Peace and Freedom Youth Forum and the Norwegian organization Fantasifubuna. It lasted 48 hours, of which 12 hours were workshopping. And we had 35 participants from Palestine and the Nordic countries. They all played the family and friends of the bride and groom, and some of them are here. Uh, with this project, we had two goals. One was to teach uh, PFF, or that PFF would learn how to make LARPs. Till Death Do Us Part was their first LARP, um, together with us. And this picture is from one of our uh, character writing workshops. The second goal was cultural exchange between the participants. We wanted them to learn about how is Palestine different and similar to the Nordic countries. And we figured that a wedding would make a good um, setting for this because it gives possibilities to explore cultural and economic and social and political differences. And in this LARP, these differences were maybe more interesting than in many other LARPs because there were actual differences between the participants. So what happened in the LARP? It started with the guests arriving the day before the wedding. The men took off to the hammam, the Turkish bath, sing-songing their way there, while the women prepared the henna party. And the henna party is a party where the bride and the groom get their hands painted with henna while the women sing and dance. This happened in the evening, and at the same time, the men were having the, the groom's bachelor party, and in the end, the parties merged. The next day, um, the women went off to the hammam while the men were having the groom shower. And the groom shower is a series of silly happenings where the groom is prepared for the wedding. For instance, he's showered with a garden hose and he's shaved with a shaving from foam put in his own shoe and all these different things. And then in the afternoon, it was time for the wedding ceremony and then there was party into the evening. And when the party was at its best, we closed the LARP. And during all of these things, people were playing on relationships, misunderstandings, cultural collisions, and bonding with new acquaintances. As I said, we had a workshop, um, 12 hours of workshopping, doing different activities to make sure that the group bonded as one, but also to prepare them for playing this LARP together. And one of the things we did, which is a bit different, was that in a Palestinian wedding, there are things that are happening over the year before the wedding takes place. And we played that out as scenes in the workshop. Another thing we did was that we had a one-hour test run the day before. So people got to play their characters for an hour. Uh, and then they could figure out, did this really work? Should I do more of that? And then they could change things around before they started playing. We made some design choices in the process. We wanted to have quite a lot of transparency, and that was because we wanted um, the cultural contents to, uh, contents to come out. People could read different characters and thus find out about different things about the culture. Uh, we also chose to have pre-written characters. One reason for that was that we wanted to have control of what we what content was present in the LARP, how to represent the culture, and also the balance between the different groups. Uh, it's also good for when you have a lot of new players, because they don't necessarily know how to create interesting, playable characters for themselves. So if you give them good, playable characters written and then workshop for a while, they will be able to play better. We had both discrete and intrusive mechanics 
um, discrete was, for instance, the black box. We had a black box like you have here. So if we were playing in here and somebody wanted to play out a scene, they could invite someone in and they would go in there and play it out. Future, past, dreams, whatever. Um, intrusive, during the wedding ceremony, everybody gave a monologue about what um, they thought about the marriage as it was happening. We also had a representation mechanic for kissing because several of the story arcs involved kissing, especially for Harald and Hulud, who are, we can see here, they're kissing with their hands in front of their face. Um, <laughs> The fader we discussed the most was the loyalty to setting because we wanted to show the Palestinian community and the Norwegian Nordic community as realistically as possible. And this gave us some problems. Uh, one of the problems was that in, um, in the Nordic countries, who you marry is a personal choice. Whereas in Palestine, that is a family matter. Uh, the bride and groom can say no if their family says, I want you to marry this person, they can say no. But if they come to their parents and say, I want to marry this person, the family can say no as well. And not many Palestinian families will let their daughters marry a foreigner who's not Muslim. So we had to find a solution for that, which was still plausible. So we designed... Um, around it, we made sure that the bride came from a moderate family, that she, her father had a Marxist background, and they were non-religious. The mother's family was more conservative, and the sister of the bride was married to a very conservative man. So this meant that it was plausible for Hulud to marry Haral, but not without controversy in the Palestinian community. We also made sure that the marriage contract had been signed before uh, the LARP, so that it would not be any point to like plot to stop the wedding. The marriage was al already there. Um, in the start, I said that we had two goals with our project, uh, to teach the Palestinians to make new LARPs and for cultural exchange. That was a success. <laughs> uh, the Palestinians, the PFF, has gone on to making many very good LARPs, both locally, like the Tribes LARPs, and Halat Isar, which is an international project, and many others. And it's so fun to play their LARPs now. Uh, and the participants learn so much from each other, and maybe particularly for many Nordic people, Palestine is mostly mentioned in the news as somewhere that is occupied by Israel. Uh, and that's maybe what we think about mostly. But going there, playing with people, learning about their customs, learning about their culture, we now know a lot more, which is great. If you want to learn more about this LARP, uh, Petter made a video. He was one of the participants. Uh, and there are also two uh, articles in the Knudepunkt book from 2003, 13, sorry. And were five or six people here that attended the LARP, so you can ask us as well. Thank you.